What's going on YouTube? Chris here. I want to bring you on an update today of Ethereum and we're also going to get into some altcoins as well. What I want to do is start out with Ethereum here and I was studying this last night out of my encyclopedia of chart patterns. We're looking at rising wedges. And what I wanted to do is break down where we potentially could go if we get a bullish break out of this and where we could go if we get a bearish break out of this. And this is going to be according to the encyclopedia of chart patterns by Thomas Bukowski. This is a great book, guys. I would recommend it. My wife got it for me. It was about $100, and I try to study it as much as possible because it basically takes thousands of patterns and breaks everything down for you. So basically, you know what to expect when these patterns take place. So if you get some from these updates, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We're going to dig into this here, and hopefully you get something from it. So when we're looking at what we're going to call here a rising wedge or a rising channel, we're going to look at it as a rising wedge. And what the Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns says here is in a bull market, if we are to get an upward breakout, the average rise is going to be about 28%. So 28 to 32% is the range. So basically from where we're at right now, if we had one of those breaks up to around 31%, that's going to put us roughly around $2,500. And that makes sense. That would be a big round psychological number. So if Ethereum wants to chop back and forth in here for a little bit longer before we have that massive break to the upside, that's definitely a possibility. One thing you have to realize is with rising wedge, or I'm excuse me, with the rising wedges, they're typically a more bearish pattern. They break to the downside more often. But what I've noticed, and that's just according to the Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns, but what I've noticed in cryptocurrency, when we're in these strong bull markets, many times we'll form these rising wedges and then we'll get that next big pop to the upside out of there. So we have to be aware of the downside. I'm going to read you the facts of the downside. But many times these rising wedges want to just follow the trend. I'm not saying that has to be the case, but many times you'll look to see that happen. It takes place a lot. Okay, even back here, there's kind of a little rising channel back here, and then we pop to the upside there. It just happens a lot in this space. And what we're doing here is looking at Ethereum on the 12-hour time frame. So that's important. So what this goes on to say is performance rank in a bull market is number 18 out of 23. The break-even failure rate is 8%. The average rise is going to be 28%. And then change after trend ends. So if we get a nice pop to the upside here and we keep going, typically when we reverse, you're going to go down about 30% is what this says. Volume trend is typically downward, and that's what we're dealing with right now. So as the price has been rising, the volume has been down. So we need to be aware of that. And then what it says is surprising findings, busted patterns, excuse me, busted patterns perform well. Wide patterns perform better than narrow ones. Wedges with a rising volume trend or heavy breakout volume do well. Now to the downside, downward breakout. So if we are to break to the downside, the target would be roughly around $1,200. That would be the spot. So if we just start breaking down through this lower trend line here, we'd look down to around $1,200. And what we're doing is taking the base of this pattern right here, adding it to the upside and the downside, as well as looking at the book. So what it says, in a bull market, the downside average decline is going to be 14% to 23%. Change after trend ends is going to be about 53%. Volume trend typically downwards. Pullbacks have to happen 63% of the time. So what they're talking about in pullbacks is if we drop down and we bounce back up, or we'll bounce back up and test this trend line again. And that happens about 63% of the time. So the rest of the time, you're just going to break down to that target area extremely fast. Other times, you'll break down, bounce back up before you go lower again. Okay, and these are important, guys, and this is why you're going to want to put alerts and alarms on these trend lines and where they break down through. You know, you could put an alert. You can see I have one right up here for Ethereum at 1,891, so I can see if we are going to get that nice break to the upside if we start getting back to that area. Now, what you're seeing are very small candles in here, like short day candles. Okay, a lot of indecision as we're fighting back and forth, just moving sideways, sideways right now. So it's basically... The bulls and the bears are just having a, an all-out battle right now. We don't have any clear direction. And I, I typically don't like this price action for Ethereum. It's just been weird all around. You know, we haven't had just that clear higher high, higher lows. I mean, you can see the higher lows coming in right in this range here and the higher highs, but it's just been more of a grind up as opposed to that steady. Sometimes you can look at like even what Zcash has been doing where it's just having those steady higher highs, higher lows, very distinct pattern. But this one here has just been more so grinding up. So we have to be careful. This is a tough area for us right now. As we're trying to break to the upside, if we do go up to that area, we're going to have to get over our previous all-time high, and that's going to be up there around $1,900, pretty close to it. 
But what I like to do is use this book and kind of forecast where we may end up going. Hey, that always helps. So for Ethereum, guys, what I would say is, you know, if you're a longer term investor right now, you can see let's throw on the moving averages. This is where you want to just continue to sit in those positions, not financial, not financial advice at all. Just sit back and let this trend ride. If you're a shorter term trader, you're waiting to see what's going to happen out of here once we get some confirmation. And the RSI right now is going to be at 61. So you can see very neutral, just moving sideways right now. Volumes dropping, waiting for the whales to make their decision. So that's going to be Ethereum, guys. If you get some from this, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We're going to get into a few more here. Just kind of scroll down, take a look. So we're hope to, hopefully going to do a Litecoin video later today or tomorrow. So I'll let that one go. The next one I want to take a look at was Zcash. We're at $160. So you can see very distinct in these higher highs, higher lows, big pushes to the upside so what you're seeing for zcash now we're going to try to get up above 163 dollars and 51 cents if we can get up above that the next area we're going to look to it's going to be around 179 dollars so those are going to be the next two overhead resistance areas you can see guys uh this candle here i mean these wicks that come in they're just insane and that's why i don't do any leverage in this space i mean a lot of people really got hurt on these and liquidated so you can see that we went from 157 dollars we wicked all the way down to 124 dollars so things get pretty crazy up in this area now in terms of support we need to hold about 149 and then be down around this 20 ema on the 12 hour time frame that'd be roughly about 139 dollars is going to be the area you know what zcash they it may have a nice beautiful pop to the upside here coming up guys i mean zcash when it wants to get moving like we've talked about for a long time when i talked about the five coins that you'd want to hold zcash was one of them it's it's a rare coin it's been a, around for quite a long time and when these moves come in they're very powerful the rsi right now is up around 70 so if you don't have a piece of zcash guys you know what i would do i always wait for retracements i'd wait for a day when we have a big dump and then maybe look to see where there's good entries i wouldn't chase anything but if you're a longer term investor in this this is where you just want to keep letting it ride just let it roll okay so that's going to be zcash really setting some nice numbers there bitcoin cash we're at 709 a lot of wicks up in this area here so a lot of indecision and that's also coming with heavy selling pressure. So I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin Cash, guys, we're either gonna move sideways a little bit longer or eventually here we're gonna get that big dump back. And I would expect us to go back to around $601 is gonna be my support and then be around 631. And you can see guys, this was previous resistance and we have broke up through that hard. Okay, now typically, Z, or um, excuse me, Bitcoin Cash, when it does sell off, it's really fast and aggressive. It can have candles come in as you can see here, roughly about 23% to the downside. But right up here, when you see a lot of these wicks, that's showing indecision. You can see these high wave candles. So this is just a spot to be careful. Longer term investors, let it ride. Shorter term traders, we have to be careful of this because we definitely could go from you know 709 back down to 606 very quickly. Now, if Bitcoin Cash wants to keep this rolling and we just consolidate and move sideways, the next area we look, serious target would be up around $793 is going to be the range for me. Then up above that, we'd look to around $800 and then $850. But it's really nice to see Bitcoin Cash getting some moves here, trading above the 20, 50, 100, and 200. RSI is sitting up about 68 right now. OMG is at 619 Let's take a look at Link. Link's at $32, kind of looking similar to Bitcoin Cash up in that range. But we're at $32.17. In terms of support, we look to around $29.99, so we'll call it $30 is going to be the area for support if we have a downside break. Now, some I want you to pay attention to, these candles have been very tight, and they've stayed within the body of this candle here. So we definitely could have, you know, if Bitcoin wants to keep moving, Ethereum keep moving here, Link could have a nice pop to the upside here. We'd have to get over top of 34.30, and then it'd be up to around 35.85, then we'd have blue sky breakouts again. And typically, when we're looking at this on the 12-hour time frame, I like to measure the retracements. We're typically looking at about, if we measure this out here, 22% there. 28%, and this is what I like to do so I can kind of judge if we're getting closer to the retracement area, 16%, and then we'll do this one up here. And we did go all the way down 
at one point to 23% with that long wick, but where we're at right now, we're down about 10%. So this is definitely an area, if these candles want to keep getting tighter, we could have a nice pop to the upside here coming up. We're still up above our 20, our 50, our 100, and our 200 moving average right now. If we take a look at link here and the technicals, on the one-day time frame, we're looking at a 2 sell, 8 neutral, and a 16 buy. The commodity channel is going to be a sell. We have a buy for the awesome oscillator momentum, the MACD. So overall link, you know, it's just been doing really well. When it gets these retracements, it's typically between about 16 and we'd call it 30%. And that's just typical. And guys like me who want to do that swing trading, that's what you're looking for. I mean, those are pretty big moves there, guys, of 16 to 20%. Some markets don't move that much in a year. Okay, so that's going to be link. The next one I wanted to look at, NEO here is up at $42. That's looking great. Dash at 263 Amazing. If we get into Tezos, I want to take a look at that one. I know a lot of people, if you're here for Tezos, let me know down low. <clears throat> so we're still up above on the 12-hour time frame. We're up above our 20, our 50, our 100, and our 200 moving. Average there, all these reds, all these red resistance lines, now we want them to become support. So we're looking at about $4.50 to see if we can hold, and then it would be down around $3.94 are going to be the support areas. But this is what I always do, and now I'm going to have to go back through after this video and turn these green. And that's what we're looking for. But when Tezos moves, this is how it moves in those big round movements. If you look at this back in here, I want to show you a good example. These round movements. Whenever you see this rounded bottom here, guys, many times you'll get massive explosions up like 40-50%. You can see even here how we round it out a little bit. So really look for that. And then this is what we were covering for quite a long time, this big rounded bottom here. So now we're going to have to see, is this going to be consolidation sideways, get that next move to the upside? A lot of selling pressure, but we also had a lot of buying pressure. The nice thing is, though, if we can get over top of that $5, and we'll call it $0.40, then it's another blue sky break out there, which is really nice to see. But you can see these big round patterns. Guys, always look for this stuff as you go through the charts, and that's what I like to do. I'll just go through these real fast, and I'll click, and I'll look for these rounded bottoms or rounded positions and you know, take a look at them and see if they work out well, and many times they do. If we get into XLM, and guys, hit that like button if you appreciate this. I'm trying to go through a lot with you today. I'm not feeling the best. My health's been uh, not the best recently, so I've just been trying to rest as much as possible, but I wanted to get this in for you today. haven't got to do a video in about three or four days here so just bear with me and uh your prayers and everything are always appreciated so what we're looking for here trying to stay up above the 20 the 50 the 100 and the 200 that's looking good candles are getting small right now and that's always a good thing in terms of when we're having that selling pressure guys after we've had those big dumps when you see the candle starting to get tighter many times i'll show the end of the selling pressure doesn't always have to be, but it can show the end before we start reversing again. But what we like to hold right now for XLM, we're going to look at about 48 and a half cents would be our support area. Resistance is going to be 0 0.5384, then be up to around 57 cents is going to be the range. And you can see typically what happens with XLM here. We have those big pushes up, then we'll move sideways, get really tight before we blast again. Same as back in here, blast, get really tight. Blast again, really tight. We blasted, going to get tight again, and most likely we're going to keep this moving to the upside here in the longer term. RSI right now is at 63. XLM is one, when it moves, it, it really moves hard, fast, and aggressively. So that's one I always want to keep my eye on there. And you can see how we had that accumulation period for so long, and now we're actually moving strong to the upside here. So you want to look at those trends, identify the trend, the trend's up. That's what you want to trade with. You don't want to go against the trend, guys. It's one thing I can always tell you, do not go against the trend. Um, ETC right now at $14.56. Civic, awesome guys. This has always been one of my favorite coins. People used to make fun of me. I did some videos on Civic before, but you know, it's it's really kicking butt right now, almost at 50 cents. We were looking at it, it was around two cents, four cents. Um, let's see here. Uma's at 26. These are all the coins I'm looking at. These are the ones that I look at every day, guys, just so you know. And I'll slow this down just so you can look at the coins. Comp. It's one I'm keeping an eye on as well. Very low supply. But just scrolling up through here so you can see what I'm trying to trade when I do get some time to trade Ave. Let's take a look here for all the people who love Dogecoin. 
So with Dogecoin, what we're trying to do here, we're going to try to hold roughly about five cents as support. But the tough thing with Doge, guys, and what you have to realize with Elon talking about it and celebrities and everything talking about it, it's going to be all over the place. So this can be a tougher one to trade. I mean, you can definitely go off the technicals. I really haven't been trading it just because a tweet or whatever can come in at any moment and kind of go against you or whatnot. I like to just go off stuff where there's not a ton of news surrounding it. But roughly we want to hold about five cents if we drop lower it'd be about that 0 0.0488 is going to be the area in terms of overhead resistance we're going to try to get up above 0 0.0706 rsi right now is at 56 so if we do want to start making a move to the upside there we have plenty of room to do it the volatility stop right now you can see it's moved to the downside so always watch that as well because that will tell you the trend in the short term we're in that downtrend okay longer term in an uptrend always looking for that so if you like me covering doge let me know down low do one more here, guys, and let's go to Digibyte. <coughs> Excuse me. So Digibyte up above the 20, 50, 100, 200, looking good there. What we'd want to hold as support is roughly about 0 0.06917 is going to be the area for support. Candle's getting a little bit tighter there. So far, we've been working in like a short day candle. Overhead resistance, 0 0.07987. If we can get up above that... Let's take a look here. Really zoom out. Guys, let me know if you're here for Digibyte. That's about the chart I have for it, guys. And this has just been in a steady uptrend right now. If you're looking to get into Digibyte, I would wait for some nice retracement before you get into it. That's just my opinion. I always like to wait for retracements. Let the market come to me before I get into something. I don't want to chase the market. We've all done that before and many times it doesn't end well. I mean, you can chase something like this over here. You think you're having a nice breakout, and then boom, it dumps on you. So just be careful, guys. Always look for those retracements. But God bless each and every one of you. That's about what I can do for you today, guys. Take care. God bless. <coughs>